Married life with Olivia had initially promised warmth and companionship, yet the reality was far from idyllic. Every day seemed like a battle against ceaseless grumbling and complaints that permeated our shared space. I found myself entangled in a web where every action was deemed wrong, every choice questioned. In the days before we became a couple, my life was a tapestry of vibrant hobbies and an active social circle. Sports, cycling, and football were my passion, shared joyfully with friends. However, the entry of Olivia into my life marked the slow demise of these pursuits. She dismissed them as unaffordable luxuries or conflicting with her plans, leaving me isolated from friends and disconnected from the activities that once defined me. It took me years, clouded by infatuation, to recognize the insidious changes taking place. Only during moments of reflection, often accompanied by the solace of a few beers, did I grasp the magnitude of what I had sacrificed. Why marry someone for their perfection, only to embark on a mission to mold them into someone else entirely? As I delved into the labyrinth of our relationship, I uncovered Olivia's knack for asserting control over our lives. Friends and family became targets of her scrutiny, deemed either inadequately educated, too boisterous, or too much of a threat to her sensibilities. The habit of incessant demands, endless work, and meticulous task lists became the norm, transforming our once promising union into a battlefield. Recollections of our early dating days portrayed a different Olivia, caring, attentive, and flexible. The subtle hints of self-demand that surfaced seemed harmless back then, barely raising alarms. Joanna Farrington Hall, as she insisted on retaining her maiden name, was a striking figure from a wealthy lineage. I, now William Blake, led a content life before our paths intertwined. A decent job, a circle of friends, and engaging hobbies created a satisfying existence. Meeting Olivia elevated this contentment to new heights. Tall with long flowing blonde hair and an air of English grace, she commanded attention effortlessly. Her blue eyes, alive with intensity, revealed a smart and determined personality. The unexpected turn in our story occurred when Olivia, seemingly out of my league, asked me out. Confused by the sudden attention, I questioned her motives. I'm tired of all these rich, arrogant suitors. You're different kinder. I've noticed your smiles and jokes with friends. I like it, she chuckled, pulling me into her arms with a captivating smile and unwavering eye contact. Despite initial doubts and the early hour, a seed of hope sprouted within me, perhaps against the odds. Everything could work out. Olivia, meticulous in her appearance, invested in designer clothes, personal trainers, and spa treatments. The engagement unfolded seamlessly until a chance encounter with an old family friend, Richard Templeton, cast shadows on our seemingly perfect union. The unearthing of Olivia's connections took an unexpected turn with the intrusion of Richard Templeton, a figure from her past. Caught in a clandestine rendezvous at a local bar, Richard and Olivia shared a familiarity that went beyond mere friendship. The scene unfolded with Richard holding Olivia's hands across the table, an act that sent a ripple through the foundations of our engagement. Caught in a moment of disbelief, I abandoned my initial plan to exit the awkward encounter. Instead, I confronted the duo, taking a seat at their table. Olivia's attempt to downplay the situation as an explanation to Richard about our engagement only fueled my suspicion. I had to tell Richard we were engaged, she claimed, insisting on discussing the matter privately. As Richard graciously excused himself, he left with well-wishing words hinting at the uniqueness of my situation. Olivia, now Isabella in this retelling, apologized for not informing me about her past connection with Richard. However, an air of uncertainty lingered, as if more lay beneath the surface. The day, tainted by this unsettling revelation, continued with a jousting event. Knights on horseback wielded foam spears, their camaraderie overshadowed by the unspoken tension between Isabella and me. The discomfort persisted, escalating when Richard sought a memento from Isabella. Tying her veil to his spear, they drew applause. But it was the ensuing flirtation that stoked the embers of my unease. Back home, the confrontation escalated as I questioned Isabella's proximity to Richard. The admission of a rekindled connection fueled my frustration. Accusations flew, and the revelation of their mutual attraction left a bitter taste.
The suggestion of potential infidelity and the specter of divorce loom, threatening to unravel the carefully constructed facade of our relationship. A startling proposition emerged in the heat of the argument. An arrangement, devoid of love but economically advantageous, surfaced as an unconventional solution. The prospect of an open relationship took root, with the hope that discretion could salvage the remnants of our connection. Silence hung in the air as the consequences of divorce loomed large, forcing a reluctant consideration of this unexpected proposition. As the dust settled, a tentative agreement emerged, setting the stage for a precarious future where financial stability coexisted with emotional detachment. The aftermath of Isabella's revelation left an indelible mark on our relationship. A web of doubt and suspicion now entangled our every interaction. The promise of an open relationship hung overhead like an uneasy cloud, obscuring the once clear skies of our connection. Questions gnawed at the edges of my consciousness. Could I truly ignore the specter of Isabella's renewed intimacy with Richard? Was financial stability worth the sacrifice of emotional fidelity? These doubts lingered, casting a pall over our once promising engagement. The practicalities of our arrangement unfolded mechanically. Isabella, now Sophia, delved into the world of open couple sites, navigating responses from intrigued individuals drawn to the allure of her elegant facade. The facade, a fragile veneer concealing a reality increasingly defined by detachment. The semblance of normalcy persisted as we delved into mundane activities, shopping, cooking, and cleaning. The dynamics of our relationship morphed into a pragmatic coexistence, devoid of the passion and depth that once defined our connection. As Sophia pursued connections outside our union, I grappled with the consequences of this unconventional path. The intimacy I once cherished now became a commodity exchange for financial stability. Fidelity crumbled under the weight of necessity, leaving behind a hollow shell of the love we once professed. The disintegration of our emotional bond paralleled the growth of our daughter, now named Lily. Thirteen years old and caught in the crossfire of our unconventional arrangement, Lily bore witness to the fractures in our family foundation. Parent-teacher meetings became battlegrounds, and the strain on our relationship spilled over into every facet of our lives. The shadows of doubt cast by Isabella's past choices now eclipsed any semblance of normalcy. The uneasy truce we maintained, anchored by financial pragmatism, crumbled beneath the weight of unresolved emotions. As we navigated the challenges of co-parenting in this fractured landscape, the shadows of doubt loomed large, threatening to engulf whatever remained of our family. In the wake of our strained arrangement, the veneer of family unity wore thin. Lily, our teenage daughter, caught in the crossfire, grappled with the evolving dynamics of her parents' unconventional relationship. The tension within our home reverberated in muted conversations and guarded glances. One evening, as the aroma of dinner wafted through the air, the strained silence finally fractured. Lily, perceptive beyond her years, confronted us with unspoken questions. What's happening between you and mom? She inquired, her gaze shifting between Sophia and me. Sophia, her usual composed self, attempted to deflect. It's just grown-up stuff, sweetheart. Nothing for you to worry about. Yet the lines etched on Lily's face revealed the depth of her concern, a poignant reminder of the collateral damage inflicted upon our family. The facade of normalcy shattered further during a tense parent-teacher meeting. Lily's academic progress became a battleground for our conflicting parenting styles. Sophia, now a master of deflection, dismissed concerns with a casual wave, emphasizing the need for Lily to adapt to the complexities of the adult world. A heated exchange ensued, with accusations of neglect and emotional detachment hurled between us. You can't shield her forever with your open relationship nonsense. I retorted, frustration tainting my words. Sophia countered. And you think your traditionalist approach is any better? It's a facade, Phil, just like everything else. Amidst the verbal sparring, Lily's voice emerged as a plea for normalcy. Can't you both just be parents? I don't need this weird arrangement. I need a family, she implored, her eyes brimming with the weight of an adolescence marred by our unconventional choices. The realization dawned that our attempts to shield Lily from the fallout of our decisions had failed miserably. The strains on our family ties now threatened to sever the bonds we once held dear. 
As the echoes of our argument lingered in the air, the path forward remained uncertain, overshadowed by the tension that underscored our fractured family dynamics. As the complexities of our unconventional family unfolded, a peculiar event emerged on the horizon, a local jousting tournament. Lily's newfound interest in medieval history led us to attend, hoping the diversion would temporarily alleviate the tension that gripped our home. The event unfolded with a thunderous clash of lances against shields and the cheers of the gathered crowd. Lily, eyes wide with fascination, watched the spectacle unfold. Amidst the medieval revelry, Sophia and I found ourselves unwittingly drawn into a metaphorical jousting match of our own. The echoes of the crowd provided a backdrop for an unexpected conversation. Do you think this is some kind of game, Phil? Sophia queried, her gaze fixed on the jousters. Our family is not a spectacle for others to cheer on. We need to address the real issues. I sighed, feeling the weight of our unresolved conflicts. Maybe it's time we stop pretending, Sophia. This arrangement isn't working. Lily deserves more than a facade of a family. We can't keep jousting with each other's emotions. Sophia's response carried a mixture of frustration and resignation. So what's your solution, Phil? To revert to some conventional family model? Pretend like the past few years didn't happen? Her eyes met mine, and in that moment, the armor we had each worn began to crack. The tension of our ongoing joust extended beyond the tournament grounds. As we navigated the delicate balance of family dynamics, Lily observed our verbal jousting with a furrowed brow. Can't you both just talk without turning everything into a game? She interjected, her voice a plea for resolution. The tournament, intended as a lighthearted escape, morphed into a symbolic battleground for our family's future. The clash of ideals and the unspoken resentments hung in the air. A stark reminder that our attempts to shield Lily from our conflicts had, once again, failed. Amidst the jousting spectacle, the realization dawned that our family ties required more than a superficial diversion. As we left the tournament grounds, the unresolved tension lingered, casting a shadow over our familial bonds. The jousting game had revealed the fractures within, and the path forward remained uncertain. The days following the jousting tournament brought a discernible shift in the dynamics of our household. The tensions that had been simmering beneath the surface were now threatening to boil over, unveiling alliances and fractures that none of us could ignore. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, I found myself engaged in a candid conversation with Lily. Dad, why can't you and Mom just get along? It's like you're on opposite teams and I'm stuck in the middle, she remarked her frustration evident. I took a deep breath, grappling with the complexity of explaining adult relationships to a teenager. Lily, it's not that simple. Your mom and I have different perspectives, and sometimes it's hard to find common ground. But that doesn't mean we're against each other or against you. As the days passed, Sophia and I attempted to navigate the strained alliances within our home. In a rare moment of vulnerability, Sophia approached me, her expression a mix of weariness and sincerity. Phil, we need to find a way to coexist for Lily's sake. Our constant clashes are affecting her, and I don't want her to grow up thinking love is synonymous with conflict. I nodded, acknowledging the truth in Sophia's words. Maybe we need to redefine our roles, not as adversaries, but as partners in raising Lily. We may not agree on everything, but we can at least agree on wanting what's best for her. Yet, alliances within the family remained fragile. Lily, torn between two worlds, expressed her frustration. I just want a normal family, where we can all be together without it feeling like a battleground. Is that too much to ask? The unraveling alliances became even more apparent during a family dinner. Casual conversations morphed into subtle power struggles, alliances forming and disbanding in the span of a meal. The dinner table, once a symbol of unity, now mirrored the fractured relationships within our home. As alliances shifted and redefined, the challenges of maintaining a semblance of normalcy intensified. The echoes of disagreement and strained alliances underscored the precarious balance we were attempting to strike. The unraveling alliances within our family signaled a need for introspection and a collective effort to mend the fraying fabric of our connections. A palpable tension lingered in the air as Sophia and I navigated the aftermath of the unraveling alliances. The metaphorical doors between us seemed to have closed, 
each sealed with the weight of unspoken grievances. It was in this atmosphere that an unexpected conversation unfolded. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Sophia and I found ourselves sitting across from each other in the living room. The silence between us was deafening, punctuated only by the distant hum of city life outside. I didn't think it would come to this, Sophia admitted, her gaze fixed on the floor. We were supposed to be a family, Phil. What happened to us? I sighed, grappling with the weight of the question. Life happened, Sophia. We got lost in our individual struggles and forgot to navigate them together. Maybe it's not too late to open those closed doors. She looked up, her eyes searching mine for sincerity. Do you really think we can fix this, Phil? After everything that's happened? I nodded, determined. If we want to salvage any semblance of a family, we need to start with an open dialogue. No more hiding behind alliances or avoiding the uncomfortable truths. We owe it to Lily and to ourselves. The following days saw a slow but deliberate effort to communicate openly. Our conversations weren't always easy, emotions often bubbling to the surface, but we persisted. In a pivotal moment, Lily, sensing the shift, approached us. I want us to be a family again, she declared, her earnestness cutting through the lingering tension. But we need to be honest with each other. No more secrets or hidden alliances, just the truth. Sophia and I exchanged glances, acknowledging the truth in Lily's words. She's right, Sophia admitted. We've let too much go unsaid. As we opened the door to candid conversations, revelations unfolded. Each member of the family laid bare their fears, frustrations, and hopes for the future. The process was painful yet cathartic, a necessary step toward rebuilding the bonds that had frayed over time. The open door became a symbol of vulnerability and a commitment to transparency. It was a reminder that despite the challenges, we could choose to face them together. Amidst the ongoing family dynamics, a new player entered the scene, bringing with her a sense of intrigue that added another layer of complexity to our lives. Meg, a friend from the past, reappeared unexpectedly, her presence injecting a mix of curiosity and uncertainty into our household. One evening, as the sun dipped below the city skyline, Meg and I found ourselves sitting in the living room, the air thick with unspoken questions. What brings you back, Meg? I asked, trying to navigate the subtleties of the conversation. She smiled, a hint of mystery in her eyes. Life took an unexpected turn, and I found myself revisiting old connections. Your family has always intrigued me, Phil. Intrigued? In what way? There's an energy here, a dynamic that's both captivating and complicated. I sensed it even back when we first met. As the conversation unfolded, Meg revealed her own challenges and the desire for a fresh start. The complexities of our family's dynamics seemed to resonate with her in ways that surprised both of us. I've been through my fair share of ups and downs, she admitted. Maybe we can find a way to navigate them together. Her words hung in the air leaving a sense of uncertainty about the role Meg might play in our lives. The family, already grappling with internal struggles, now faced the enigma of Meg's presence. Sophia, observing the exchange from a distance, voiced the concerns that lingered in the air. Is she here to stay, Phil? And what does her presence mean for us? I sighed, acknowledging the complexity of the situation. I don't have all the answers, Sophia. But maybe Meg's presence is an opportunity for us to reevaluate and redefine our family dynamics. As the days unfolded, Meg's interactions with each family member added both intrigue and tension. Lily, always perceptive, seemed to sense the unspoken dynamics. What's Meg doing here, Dad? Lily asked one evening, her curiosity evident. She's a friend who's navigating her own journey. Sometimes, unexpected connections can lead to meaningful changes in our lives. The intrigue surrounding Meg's presence became a focal point, both within the family and in our individual lives. As we grappled with the uncertainties she brought, the question lingered. Would Meg be the catalyst for further complications, or could she be the unexpected ally our family needed in this tumultuous chapter? The atmosphere in our home took an unexpected turn as whispers of a gathering circulated. Meg, the enigmatic addition to our lives, suggested a party, a social event that promised both revelation and potential upheaval. One evening, as the living room buzzed with anticipation, 
Meg laid out her proposal. Let's throw a party, Phil. It's time to unveil the layers, bring everything to the surface. Her words hung in the air, leaving each family member contemplating the implications. Sophia, ever cautious, voiced her concerns. Is this the right time, Meg? We're already dealing with so much. Meg chuckled, a mischievous glint in her eyes. Sophia, sometimes the best way to face challenges is head on. A party could be the catalyst for the clarity we all need. As the date of the gathering approached, preparations were underway. The house transformed, adorned with decorations that mirrored the mix of emotions within our family. Lily, ever the enthusiast, added her creative touch to the setup. Maybe Meg's onto something, Lily remarked, arranging flowers with a thoughtful expression. A party might just shake things up, and who knows, it could be exactly what we need. The night of the party arrived, and our home buzzed with an energy that was a blend of excitement and apprehension. Guests arrived, including friends, colleagues, and acquaintances from different facets of our lives. The living room, once a space of quiet contemplation, now echoed with laughter and conversation. As I navigated through the crowd, conversations unfolded in layers of our family's story began to surface. Richard, the family friend from the past, engaged in a candid conversation with Sophia. Their exchange, though civil, hinted at the unspoken tensions that lingered beneath the surface. Meanwhile, Lily, ever the social butterfly, struck up conversations with various guests, her infectious enthusiasm creating pockets of warmth amid the gathering. In a quiet corner, I found Meg engaged in conversation with Ian, a newcomer whose presence added another dimension to the evening. Their discussion, though casual, hinted at a shared history that left me wondering about the connections that had brought them together. As the night progressed, the party served as a stage for revelations, alliances, and the unveiling of emotions long kept hidden. Dialogues echoed through the rooms, weaving a tapestry of stories that intersected in unexpected ways. The gathering, intended to bring clarity, left each family member contemplating the significance of the night, what had been unveiled, and what new paths lay ahead. As the last guest departed, the echoes of the party lingered, leaving our home infused with a sense of both resolution and the anticipation of what the dawn of a new day might bring. The air in our home held a weight of finality as we confronted the aftermath of the revelatory party. Emotions lingered, each family member grappling with the implications of the unveiled truths. The time had come for decisions, and an air of resolution hung in the atmosphere. In the aftermath of the gathering, conversations took on a somber tone. Sophia, ever the pragmatist, addressed the elephant in the room. We can't ignore what happened, Phil. It's time to face the consequences and decide where we go from here. Around the dining table, a family meeting ensued, with each member expressing their thoughts on the revelations of the party. Lily, surprisingly insightful, shared her perspective. Maybe it's time for us to find our individual paths. We've been holding on to a version of family that may no longer serve us. Meg, ever enigmatic, added her perspective. Life is a series of departures and arrivals. Maybe this is the departure we need to embrace new beginnings. As the conversation unfolded, a decision emerged. A collective agreement that signaled the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. The air was thick with a sense of closure as each family member acknowledged the need for change. The next day, as the sun cast its warm glow on our home, the atmosphere felt different. Bags were packed, decisions were made, and the time for final departures had arrived. Jade, now a university student, prepared to embark on a new chapter of her life. As we saw her off at the train station, emotions ran high. I wish her the best, Joe whispered, a genuine sincerity in her voice that hinted at the complexities of our shared history. As the train pulled away, carrying Jay toward her future, the remaining family members exchanged glances. The departure of one marked the beginning of a new era for all. In the quiet aftermath, as our home settled into a new normal, a sense of closure and possibility lingered. The final departure had come, leaving behind echoes of the past and the promise of a future yet to unfold. Thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share your thoughts on the events in the comments below. Take care.